Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. We had consolidation start in some places, but not everywhere. The S&P 500 bulls defended the low of the day. You can see we got a triple bottom the last three days. They defended the low of yesterday. The names that pulled back were QQQ related, which we know is big tech, semiconductors, NVDA has earnings now-ish, and growth names. They led the way down. Healthcare held on for the morning to keep the S&P 500 stronger but right now, the S&P 500 is knocking on the door of daily consolidation to potentially join in. So if we see a bear break of 394.49 tomorrow, daily consolidation underway, and then we watch EMA 12 support on the daily, and we keep an eye out for hourly oversold conditions. But so far, bulls pleased with the sideways consolidation for the S&P 500. It was the NASDAQ that saw the further pullback. But again, there's no red flags on the pullback at this point. And one win for the bulls was the fact that we didn't see all major sectors dropping at the low of the day at the same time, which shows us money leaving the market. We didn't see that today. So watching closely to see what this consolidation looks like now that we finally have it. We've been looking for it uh, for pretty much this week. And so now we're looking at the retracement size. And essentially, EMA 12 is going to align with the 382 retracement over the next couple of days. So... Ideally, the bulls want to hold daily EMA 12 to keep that consolidation healthier overall. If we see increasing bear volume, if we see all major sectors dropping to the lows at the same time, if we see daily EMA 12 support lost, that's going to be a win for bears. So keeping an eye out for that. NASDAQ, we can see, got real close to hourly oversold conditions. The bulls defended the low of the day at the close, but overall, still a downtrend to be keeping an eye on. And QQQ. Hourly EMA 12 rejected the high of the bounce today. Loss of the five minute uptrend was the indication that the hourly higher low was set. As soon as you pull back this much, you know to scout a five minute lower high as the most likely result. It's a conjunction of signals. We know the hourly lower high is most likely. We've got hourly EMA 12 resistance. We got the five minute RSI just under 70. We pull back that significantly. You scout the five minute lower high. You stop out if the high breaks. If we break support, it's a winning trade. The dollar, trying to get a four-hour bounce going, still struggling at EMA 12 and still lower highs. So no four-hour bounce yet for the dollar, or I should say no daily bounce yet for the dollar. Inside bar, just like the inside, the inside bar on the S&P 500, we can see semiconductors pulled back notably, and that's actually a, an island reversal there which is not very common, but when you gap up and top out and then gap down, it's an island reversal, but I'm just going to treat it like daily consolidation, scouting. How does the market respond to hourly oversold, which we have not seen yet? And can the bulls keep this daily consolidation healthy? At this point, it's too soon to say. Watching daily EMA 12. NVDA, no earnings reaction yet. Healthcare still watching this four-hour rising wedge. Bears really want to see this break because healthcare is still grinding daily EMA 12 and holding sideways. Bears want to see us roll over into weekly consolidation for healthcare. So it's going to be a pretty important day for me with healthcare tomorrow. I don't ever trade healthcare, really ever. And it's just a gauge of the broader market for me. And when I'm determining, do I want to short SPY or short QQQ or long SPY or QQQ, I'm looking at the major sectors to make that determination. So as soon as I see XLV holding on strong all morning, I know that, and this was the bulls holding on all morning while QQQ was doing this. And so I know to look bearish on QQQ rather than SPY because XLV is holding SPY up better. XLF still a potential daily bull flag inside bar today. EMA 12 support catching up. We've held EMA 12 the last two tests. No red flags on this consolidation at this point. So essentially, what bear, the burden's on bears for me during this consolidation. They have to give me red flags because we know consolidation is the part of, of healthy uptrends. And we know after the CPI move that we've seen, the daily consolidation is inevitable. So now we've got it. Not for the S&P 500, but in many other places. So now the question is, can bears give me red flags? Can bears tell me, uh uh-oh, it's not a good idea to be bullish right now on the daily time frame? And we don't have that yet. I'm watching for it. I'm watching for signs on a daily basis. 
IWM did break short-term support, so closer towards weekly consolidation at this point. Not there just yet. Same thing, daily EMA 12, but it's a less clear daily uptrend overall. XLF is much more clear to me. IWM doesn't matter a whole lot to me for the broader market. Its holdings are very small, comparative to QQQ, XLF, and XLV. I just use it as a gauge of growth names, essentially. Biotech sector stayed weak, so this is an example of growth bears. And you can see the bears controlled the morning significantly, and then just a weak bounce into the rest of the day control from there. And so if you look at growth, well, biotech sector is one of them. Again, that uptrending resistance line doing a good job. Not that doing a good job of rejecting bears the last couple of days. But ARKK, very clear daily pullback. PLTR is growth. So growth showing us clear consolidation. Even the cannabis names, TLRY. We saw a nice bounce from first hourly oversold conditions. We had hourly RSI hit oversold. But again, a number of single signals aligning. So daily breakout leading to daily consolidation. You've got first hourly oversold. You've got daily EMA 12 aligning with that. And at the same time, you've got the 15 minute RSI in the teens, the low teens, and you got the five minute RSI in the teens. So I was playing that bounce. That's the first cannabis bounce I played in a long time. Scaled in in the upper to mid 390s, scaled out on the initial bounce. Tried to short it here and I was really upset with this wick. This was a scam wick. I didn't give enough wiggle room. If I gave one more extra penny, that's a that's the difference between it. That's a day maker right there. So I had a good short playing off 411 and my stop was too tight. And I call that a scam wick because that was intentional stop hunting, in my opinion. There's no news there. There's nothing happening, but someone market buys, triggers the shorts that used off 411 resistance, me, and then dropped down 2% very quickly. So I was upset with that. But that told me I'm done with TLRY for today. So bigger picture, the question is, can bulls keep the daily uptrend going, but decent dip buying so far. And we'll still be watching for the potential of a rising wedge, but nice dip buying for the bulls. MSOS on the US side is still grinding higher. Big action at the end of the day here. What you see with the ETF in cannabis here is it will do, it will sell shares into strength which it has been doing over the last week. And then it accrues a bunch of capital, a bunch of cash. And then it starts putting that cash to work. Generally at the end of the day, it will buy these thinly traded OTC names that make up the ETF. And if you can anticipate that, you can get nice action there. So look at TCNNF at the end of the day, that five minute candle, just straight up. That's just market buying. GTBIF, all these names just shoot up there. And so the play, that I made was I recognized 1195 resistance. Look what was happening at, a, at when we broke that resistance right here at 315. So we're testing the highest price that we've seen, which is a double top. We're testing that level, the highest price we've seen in hours. And the broader market at 315 is testing the low of the day. So I say, okay, there's relative strength. Why would there be relative strength right now? Probably because the ETF is going to do some buying. And so shout out to Chart Guys members because they are all over this more than me. But grab some in the 11, I think 1196. And I, of course, you know, I'm sitting there waiting. I'm waiting. Like, all right, where's the buying? I'm literally just staring at the bid in the ask because I have a decent sized position and I don't want to swing it all. So I'm saying, okay, is the buying going to start? Is the buying going to start? Eh, literally right here, I sell half. That's me right there selling half. And the spike happens right after for a solid 3% move up. So still benefited from my other half position, but went from a two day maker potential to just a day maker. But that's, that's an example of getting familiar with a sector and getting familiar with the way a trading instrument works and being able to take advantage of that. And shout out to Jungle Funk and Red Devil, who are some Chart Guys members, but they put out a Uranium Sector video again some of you watched the first one and enjoyed it. So going to post the link to the second one here. But long story short, the majority of gains that I've made in trading 
come from focusing on a sector that has high risk, high reward, and smashing the opportunity when it arises. Cannabis, crypto, and uranium has been relatively stronger than the broader stock market for two years at this point. And so I suggest getting familiar with an, a sector or two that is high risk, high reward. You have to be really patient and observe it and get to know it fundamentally and technically. And then it gives opportunities, obviously. And so we're watching Uranium where if the broader market can put in a bottom, can these names see another solid leg up because they're tightening up on the monthly timeframes over the last four or five months at this point. So check out this video and see if the Uranium sector is something you wanna get interested in for the potential opportunities. I mean, there's a lot of government aspect to be keeping an eye on and whether or not Uranium starts entering the conversation because of what's going on in Europe and the power costs of power and all that. And so countries are starting up uranium programs again that had previously been shut down. There's a lot going on there fundamentally and technically. And these videos do a good job of combining both. So I'll put that link. Gold's still holding on, but the bear miners are starting their daily bounce, even though the metals are not pulling back notably. So I talked about those miners yesterday on Twitter. Nice follow through. We are just going to be scouting a daily lower high. So I'm scouting the bull miners for daily higher lows now. Might have to be patient a couple days, but watching for hourly oversold conditions, which are approaching. If we're red tomorrow with hourly oversold, I'm gonna be looking to play a bounce for a back burner, just like TLRY did today. Doesn't mean it's going to bounce, but it's a nice probability trade there. So something I'm keeping an eye on for the metals. Oil back down to test the low. Bulls were unable to confirm a four hour uptrend. 8406 double bottom at this point burden on bears to see another lower low to keep confident. And natural gas bull break of a four hour sideways range, daily higher low set and need to get over eight, six, 16, I should say. 616 for a convincing break of this four day sideways range. Good start, but a little bit of follow through needed over this double top. So that's where we stand. Fairly uneventful day for me. IRA down with the red some green on the shorts that I swung yesterday. Talked about my TLRY short and grabbed some SQQQ yesterday. And then that end of the day MSOS move ended up with a little bit of green. So most of the day was just offsetting long positions. But that's where we stand. It's all about observing consolidation from here. Can the bull set the healthy daily higher low and keep this broader market move going? Or do bears prove something to us that have us second guessing this bounce. And we're gonna get information on an hourly and daily basis, and we'll update you tomorrow. Appreciate you watching. Do good things. I've got no end of the day video content again. Just too busy these days. And it's winter. There's not really a whole lot exciting going on. So that's the way it goes. I'll put something at the end. Do good things. Hey everyone, we're going to do some lessons from the stock market today visualized with seed packets because it's spring and I'm pumped to be outside. So it's important to also recognize that as spring and summer come, I personally tra change my trading style so that I am at the computer less. I know I want to be done earlier in the day. I know I want to set stops and let some trades play out. But for the most part, it's a much more short term window that I'm looking to trade in. But as far as today's lessons, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Those of you that I'm following for a long time know that gap ups are not for buying. So we had a gap up open today and we dropped real hard all through the morning. So gap ups are the time where people who have FOMO are buying and it's often at the top. I won't even buy a gap up open when we're in a monthly, weekly, daily uptrend. It's a generally a time to be looking to sell longs or a time for aggressive bears to be looking short. And if you have long swing positions that are open, you're looking to go bearish to potentially protect any consolidation that occurs. Most recently in the past couple of months when we've been in a weak market with a weekly and daily downtrend, it's been a very high probability trade to short gap up opens. Next we had the S&P 500 had a four hour little cup and handle on the futures chart and so did the NASDAQ. And pre-market at about 9 a.m. bull breaks occurred and we broke out to higher highs, the highest prices, the highest levels that we've seen on this entire bounce. Then we had no follow through. I ran out of seed packets, but we would have dumped down to fresh lower lows. So Bitcoin at that same point in time was very correlated, but it was much weaker. 
we were bouncing on the four hour time frame and we were not close to our recent highs. So we could look at that and say, Bitcoin is not nearly as strong as the market. It's not positioned well if the market were to consolidate from here. And so I saw that Bitcoin was weaker than the broader market and said, I am anticipating a four hour lower high to be the result of this bounce unless big time volume shows up out of nowhere. And in the end, the lower high was set and we rolled over into significant further daily consolidation. And the clue was we were weaker than the broader market. So of course, when the broader market rolls over into a weak red day, Bitcoin, which was already weaker, rolls over even further.